few minutes uh, just to announce the launch of an exciting new initiative. Um, and Sri Lanka Without Borders is partnering with uh, Ground Views and the Center for Policy Alternatives in Sri Lanka uh, to launch a 2014 uh, Digital Journalism uh, Fellowship. Uh, it's basically going to be facilitated between SLWB and uh, Ground Views, and we're going to have, uh, well, what we're going to do is uh, try to have a candidate from Canada go to Sri Lanka, work out of Colombo for about six months, and then. Um, come back and share those experiences uh, with the diaspora. Uh, given that uh, the fellowship is named after Richard de Souza and uh, Subramaniam Sivanayagam, I'm just going to quickly invite uh, Mr. Arjuna Ranavana, who is uh, currently Omni News uh, Manager in Toronto, as well as uh, Mr. Uh, Siva Siva uh, Pragasam, sorry. Uh, who is currently an editor for the Monsoon Journal, just to talk a little bit about Richard and uh, Mrs. Sivanayagam. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, looking at that list that went up uh, at the beginning of this program, I, it was uh, very emotional for me. So many people I knew, um, people I worked under, people I worked with, uh, and one of my students. Uh, but the two people who I think were closest to me were uh, Sivaram Taraki, as he was known by his pen name, and Richard. Uh, I knew of Richard de Souza when he was a boy, when he was in school, because he was uh, such a good actor and a debater. And then I got to know him as a colleague. Uh, I'll tell one Richard story. We were all poor together. Uh, and uh, <laughs> when uh, Shama was expecting our first child, uh, we had concerns about, you know, can we afford, you know, where we are going. And then Richard called me one night and he said, do you know my, my tuition pupils owe me 5,000 bucks? The 5,000 rupees in those days was a lot, lot, there was a lot of money. And he said, I'm going to keep that until your baby is born. And Richard sometimes didn't have money to put petrol, uh, gas into his uh, bike. And I knew that. So that was Richard, shirt off his back. He was a friend who grew, grew to be almost like a family member and my son's godfather. Richard's death changed our lives forever. That's the time that we two went into exile for a bit at least and uh, changed our family uh, once and for all. Richard's father's family was one of, is one of the most prominent singular families in Sri Lanka. The Rizoizas, they were very wealthy and culturally very rich. Uh, they played cricket, they did uh, everything. Uh, and his ancestor's uh, statue, uh, you would see it if you drive down the old road to God. Um, his mother was a Tam, and uh, Sri Lanka's most famous and old, oldest test cricket ground is named after uh, his, uh, his grandfather. Uh, and of course, you know, his cousin, his uh, Sanjana's Sanjana guru. So, born of a uh, Tamil mother and a singular father. And Richard spent most of his money and whatever spare time he had mentoring young people. So, this fellowship is, is a fantastic thing uh, in Richard's memory. Thank you so much. As it's customary, let me first thank the Sri Lankan Without Borders Association and the South Asian Journalist Association for inviting me to say a few words about Mr. Sivanayam on the occasion of the announcement of the Desoiza Sivanayam Global Fellowship. Subramaniam Sivanayam belonged to the journalistic profession which involves rig rigorous training, diligence, and above all, a dedication to upholding the very highest traditions believing strongly in the legendary professional oath, I hereby solemnly pledge to punish, to, I'm sorry, to publish all news, <laughs> that is, sometimes you punish people as well, eh? <laughs> to publish all news that is fit to print. Firstly, a short bio of Sivanayagam for the benefit of those here and not familiar with him. Subramanian and Sivanayagam referred to as Ayya, was educated at the Cookville Hindu College and thereafter joined the prestigious Jaffa College in Sri Lanka at the instigation of his principal, the illustrious educationist Handi Perimparayam. 
Sivanayagam entered law college but left after two years. His devoted passion for journalism made him join Lekhaus, the largest newspaper group in Sri Lanka. And there he worked initially for the newspaper I too worked for, namely the Daily News. And later he was at the Daily Mirror. After his stints with these two newspapers, he functioned as the editor of the Sri Lanka Tourist Board. It was while he was there that I got to know him better. Genial and friendly, Sivanayagam was a great conversationalist, had a good sense of humour and used to enjoy jokes very much. He later assumed duties as the founder editor in 1982 of the Jaffna-based English weekly newspaper, Saturday Review. The political situation in Northern Sri Lanka at that time, unfortunately, did not allow him to continue for long. The volatile situation was made worse by the forthright and pungent editorial formula he adopted for the newspaper. The horrendous racial riots of 1983 made him flee to, Sri Lanka, to India in a midnight boat. He spent the rest of the later years in India, UK and Europe, continuing his journalistic career. Sivanayagam also worked as editor of several publications. He wrote two interesting books titled The Gun and the Pen and the other Witness to History in Sri Lanka. His failing health made him return to Sri Lanka and he passed away in Colombo after a prolonged illness. Sivanayagam was bold in his writings and articles reflecting the true spirit of journalism, free and fair. Sivanayagam's life is perhaps ideally suited for a movie thriller. As he himself wrote in his forward in his book, Pen and Gun, I quote, having lived a life with neither glory nor ignominy for the first years, for the first 50 years of my life, the next 20 years was to become a co roller coaster ride. A nomadic life for one and a half years through six to seven countries and finally hard-earned safety in the West. There are no regrets, however. Journalism is no journalism if it lacks passion. But it goes with a price. Having paid that price, I believe this book is its own reward. Svenagam's life is a gentle reminder to all of us that God gives us but a few years in which to make our lives meaningful, where we are judged by the content of our character. Svenagam just did that, both in his life and profession. Thank you for the patience.